Hello, Richard here. And today I've got an interesting little project that I thought I'd bring you in on. This is another project born of necessity rather than anything else. What I'm going to be doing is making a degaussing machine. Now, if you're not familiar with a degaussing machine, it's basically a demagnetizer. That's what it does. It takes things that have been magnetized and it unmagnetizes them. And it's not really a machine. It's more just an electrical coil of wire with some electricity in it. But anyway, I need to make myself a degaussing machine. And you may be asking yourself, why do I need to make a degaussing machine? Well, I kind of messed up a little bit a while ago. Some time ago, I was doing a project with some really strong neodymium magnets, and I needed to know what size they were. So, like a bozo, I got my nice Mitsutoyu calipers, and I measured the size of a really powerful 20 millimeter long neodymium magnet. And what that now means is this. If I take this, and I do this, you can see my calipers are now magnetic, and they pick up swarf and all kinds of... Uh, nasty stuff. That's not ideal because what happens is as you're machining pieces of metal and you've got to measure them, you sort of find that, oh look, you know, 1.7 millimeters of crud between the jaws. These really need to be not magnetic. So I, I messed up there. So top tip, don't measure the size of your really powerful neodymium magnets with your best pair of calipers. Um, what I should have done, and hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Um, what I should have done is use these, my old plastic calipers that I've had kicking around for God knows how long, but they wouldn't have been affected and they would have measured just as well. So note to self. <laughs> Anyway, let me bring you in on what I've got on the bench, and this is going to be the basis of the uh, the degaussing machine. So let's have a look at what we've got. Now, a little while ago, we binned our old food mixer. We had a Magimix food mixer, which is basically a dirty great motor, a lot like this was, and we got a new one. And because the old one was going begging, I thought, ah, that'd be a perfect candidate for me to make this into a degaussing machine. Here's a photo of the food mixer before I uh, removed the guts of it. And... Um, I can't really show you the process of doing that because A, I didn't video it, and B, it was too gory, you know. It was, I mean, they make these things out of the hardest plastic known to man, and it wasn't pleasant the way I had to dis destruct the thing. So to save you all that trauma, here's the removed motor body. This is the stator, and this is the rotor from the motor. The rotor from the motor, that's sort of poetic almost. Now, I always had a problem remembering what was the rotor and what was the stator, and then I came ac across this kind of handy way of remembering, which is that the rotor rotates and the stator doesn't. Well, no, actually, the rotor rotates and the stator is stationary or static. So the stators are static and rotors rotate. So that was the rotor from inside here. We won't be needing that because all we're going to be doing is arranging this so that we can put an AC current through this magnetic coil that will create an alternating magnetic field. And then the idea being that we can take our magnetic thing, maybe a drill bit, maybe the calipers that you messed up once. We can power it up. We can put the thing inside the magnetic field, slowly withdraw it, and that should demagnetize it by making sure that all the little electron spins are all spinning in the same direction, which means it's no longer magnetic. As I say, I, th I thought I'd bring you in on this so I can sh sort of show you what I'm aiming at and talk a little bit about the motor I'm using in case you wanted to sort of uh, build your own. There's a few things I've sussed out whilst doing this, so um, hopefully that might prove handy to you if you ever want to build a, a degaussing machine of your own. Now, I did actually have a version one of this, which is uh, this thing. This was my version one degaussing machine that I made, and it's basically a 3D printed cylinder with a spigot poking out of the back. And it's, uh, it's a bit like the sort of chamber on a revolver. You've got four holes, and each of these has a great big 20 mil long neodymium magnet, and they're arranged sort of alternate. So that's a north, that's a south, that's a north, and that's a south. And the idea of that is you would put that in a drill, such as I have here, and then you would spin it. So the idea being with that, that that's going to create an alternating magnetic field and you could spin that next to the things you want to demagnetize. And uh, yeah, it didn't really work. <laughs> um, I didn't really troubleshoot it very far. I didn't sort of experiment much, but I tried this and it didn't really work very well. So I gave up on that until such times our food mixer went tango uniform and uh, I was able to then rip that apart and uh, make a, a more professional model, hopefully. Version two. So what we'll do is we'll just talk a bit about the sort of the, the electrical side of this. So if you want to make your own degaussing machine and you're not sure where to start because there's so many different wires, what I'll do, I'll just talk you through 
Um, what we've got here, which as I say, will help you if you want to make your own. This is a single phase induction motor. This one happens to run off UK mains, which is 50 hertz, 240 volts AC. The first thing you might notice when you look at the motor is it's actually got three wires on it. And you may think, well, why has it got three wires? We've only got like a, a live and a neutral coming in from the mains. Ignore the earth, that's not connected at the moment. Why, why have we got two wires in here and three on the coil? Well, the reason is that with a single phase induction motor, they, if you only have the one coil and you put power on, then the rotor won't rote. Is that a word? Pro no, the rotor won't rotate. I'm doing too many rhymes. Yeah, so what will happen, the rotor will just vibrate at 50 hertz or whatever your mains frequency is. It won't actually get going because single phase AC motors aren't inherently self-starting. They can't get themselves going. So what they do to overcome that is they put a capacitor in. They put a second winding in and a capacitor and that allows the thing to start. And we'll come to that in a moment. So that's why you've got three wires. You've got a common, this one's connected to neutral, which in the UK is the blue wire. So that's our neutral. And that's the sort of a common point. And then we've got the uh, white wire, which is a winding that makes the motor run. So that's called the, uh, the run winding. There's a coil on here to make the thing run. And the brown wire from the capacitor is what's known as the start winding. And it's a separate winding, which enables the thing to start. Now, what happens with the power? This was the, the original main switch. So it's a three-way switch. Well, three-way, it's um, auto, stop, and pulse. And it doesn't matter what they do, but basically the power would come in on the brown wire and then come out on the white one. So I've just removed this because I don't need it. And this is where the power would have ended up. So I've just wired that into the live just to remember where it goes. So the live comes through here and that goes into a little micro switch. And all this does basically, this is a switch that when you put the, uh, the the bowl on the mixer and you click it, it would actually plunge down this switch and it would enable the motor to start. So you couldn't start it without all the, the gubbins on the top. And all that does, it takes the, uh, the mains input and puts it on this purple wire. So we follow the purple wire off to this gadget over here. And this is a what's known as a current relay, this little thing. So it, the mains comes in here and it comes straight out on the white wire. So it comes through the coil onto the white. So just imagine that the mains power goes straight onto the white, which is the run winding. But what happens is when you start up a, a single phase AC motor, to begin with, it'll have a really high current in rush. In other words, when you power it up, it'll draw a really high current because the motor's not spinning and there's no load. So the current will go through the roof. Uh, what that does is that energizes a little relay in here that connects this orange wire to the mains. The orange wire goes through the capacitor in series and then onto the start winding. And that's where the capacitor comes in again, because in an AC circuit, what this does is this creates a phase shift in the current. And because there's a phase shift between the, run, the start winding and the run winding, that phase shift is enough to sort of create like a, a rotating magnetic field, gives the rotor a little kick. So it gets, gives the rotor a little bump start, the rotor starts spinning. Once the rotor starts spinning, the current then drops back down to a normal level. The relay drops back out and disconnects the capacitor. And you're just left with the mains coming in from the white wire through the run winding. Um, and that's it. So that's why we've got all these wires and things. And these will these will go ultimately, most of them. Because um, all we're going to do when we actually run this as a degausser, the idea is just to power just the, uh, the run winding. So the start winding won't be used. We'll just disconnect that. Now... One of the problems that you find with running a motor like this with no rotor inside it, if you, uh, if you take the rotor out of the motor, what that basically does is it means you've got a coil of wire or winding and it's got no load. And ordinarily with this in the mix, this, this, although this doesn't have any electricity in it, it's not, there's no wires in it. It's just a, uh, like an iron laminated iron core with a aluminium squirrel cage in it. Squirrel cage is just the phrase given to the uh, structure inside, which is if you took the iron out, it would look like a squirrel cage. Not that we keep squirrels in cages much these days, but anyway, I digress. Um, if you take the, this is this is an electrical component in terms of AC. So if this has got a magnetic field pulsing around it, it's going to interact with that magnetic field. And if you take this out of the windings and then power the windings up, it's basically like sitting in your car at the beginning of a of a quarter mile drag strip. And having the car in neutral is absolutely flooring the throttle. You're just going to scream the revs. In other words, the current on the motor, in, in our analogy, is going to go through the roof. And the thing will just get really hot and burn out. So you'll see a lot of people that have made these will say that, you know, when they power them up, they can only power them up for a few seconds at a time before they overheat. 
And that's why. It's because but if you don't have that in there, then the thing's got no load. Like with your car, if you put it in gear and put your foot flat on the floor, the revs will go up as the car pulls away because it's got something to work against. So we need to overcome that. With this, I don't really want to have to just turn this on for a couple of seconds and worry about it catching fire. Um, so what we need to do is find a way of limiting the amount of current that this thing's going to draw, given that this will be notable by its absence. So we'll have a little talk about that. Now, there's a few ways we could go about limiting how much current this draws. I mean, basically, all I'm going to do, like I said, is this will be the neutral, this will be the live, all this will be gone. And we're just going to put mains power onto this winding and it'll draw it'll draw way too much current and it'll just overheat and possibly even burn out so to limit the current we can do this electronically we could build a some sort of like thyristor circuit or some such to kind of electronically limit it that's quite complicated and i don't really want to go to those lengths um, another way we could do it is we could get a light bulb holder and wire in a 100 watt light bulb and then make the mains power come in through here through the light bulb and then into the windings and what that would do having this having a light bulb in series with the ac circuit will effectively limit the current whatever current is able to flow through the light bulb will be the amount of current that can flow through the winding so that will limit the current but that'll limit it quite a lot that'll um that means this will only pull 100 watts which might be enough I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's only got to be enough to demagnetize what we're working on. It doesn't have to be like uh, enough to run a power station from. So yeah, that's that might work. Just putting a light bulb in series with a coil. The other option we've got is we can use the capacitor or so on planning anyway. This cunning plan really is to basically take the start capacitor, put it in series with the incoming mains. And then this is going to basically form a capacitive reactance. Effectively, it's going to form a resistance to the current flowing through it. And this should limit the current in the coil. Now, I've done a few sums on this. And the theory is that this will limit the current to about three and a half amps, which is about right, really. That's not too bad. That's probably about 700 watts, 750 watts thereabouts. So that's kind of the plan so far. I'm going to save the actual wiring until uh, the next part of the video. I'll do a separate video where we actually power it up and hopefully don't catch fire. And also, as long as it works and it demagnetizes stuff, I'll design and 3D print a nice little enclosure for it. And we'll do that, get it all buttoned up in there so it's, the wiring's all safe and insulated. And hopefully it'll look pretty good as well. So that's the plan. I thought I'd share that with you uh, before I get too carried away with the project. So as always, I hope you found that interesting. And until next time, thanks for watching.